Welcome to the God on Encouraging Message and Prayer Series, messages from the heart of God, to let you know you can come boldly and confidently to the throne of grace, to receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, that appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. Listen, your Heavenly Father wants you to know that in these times we're living in, that you'll get a spirit of heaviness that'll come upon you. And he recognizes that. And he wants you to know how to combat that spirit of heaviness. Some people call it a spirit of depression. Some people call it just an anxiousness or an overburdened, overwhelmed feeling when you don't have the answers you need or you don't know what the situation is going to turn out to be and you don't know what's coming in your future. God has answers for you. He knows your needs before you even ask him. He tells you in Matthew 6, 8. And if he knows your needs before you ask him, it also means that he already has what you need coming to you. But you need to have your eyes open to be able to see what it is that he's providing for you. Because if you're not looking, you could miss it. Even though he's sending it and making it available to you, you want to be able to review and see what it is he's doing for you. So he wants you to know that he's a good, good heavenly father. And he's responding to your needs before you even know what your needs are. He wrote every one of your days in his book, every moment he characterized in his book, and he knows everything about you. You are naked in every thought, feeling, preparation, emotion before him. He knows everything about you. He knows what you need. He knows when you need it. He knows when it needs to be there. And he is committed to doing it for you because he loves you. He doesn't want you to struggle with things that spirits cost you. He wants you to be free from the spirit of heaviness. He wants you to be free from the spirit of anxiousness and worriedness and anxiety. He tells you and Second Timothy one seven. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God is living in you as a born again child of the living God. You're a new creation that never existed before. Christ himself comes and he lives in you. You are born of the very spirit of God and God himself is the spirit and you're born of his spirit, which means that your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That's Colossians 3.3. 3. That's what God says. So when you feel overburdened, when you feel that your experiences in life are causing you to be downtrodden, depressed, overburdened, and you're feeling that experiencing loss or maybe a light major life change, maybe it's a new baby or relationship issues or anything else. You don't know where things are coming from and how you're going to take care of things. I've got good news for you. God is on your side and he is there for you and he's with you and he's the one that gives you the strength to stand when you didn't know how you were standing. He's the one that gives you the wisdom to speak when you don't know what to say. He's the one that shows you the direction you should go when all other roads seem to just be closed on you. He is the God of God, the great I am, the living God who lives with you. He works around you and he never stops loving you and helping you all the days of your life. You have an enemy out there that is causing you to be spiritually blinded by the goodness of God. So he wants, God wants you to see the goodness that he performs and he provides for you on a moment by moment basis. Listen, the word of God teaches you and it is living and it comes to you. And the easiest way for you to experience God is to experience his word. His word is alive and living. He is the living word and his word is living. The word of God is a person and that person's word, that is a being and that person's words have been put on paper and they're as living as God is living. He tells you to take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and praying with all prayer and supplication 
And then you will see God working around you. You pray in the Spirit, guided by the Spirit, by the Word of God. And that's what God wants you to see. He takes the Word of God as your source and comfort to deal with the spirit of heaviness and any other spirit that causes you to feel downcast, overburdened, insecure, and inadequate in any situation or circumstance. So you just turn to God, recognizing your weaknesses and depending on Him to be your strength. He tells you that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is the spirit fruit that the Spirit of God Himself manifests in you. It's God's fruit of joy that gives you that strength that you can't even imagine that you had. So we see that the fruit of heaviness is really that spirit of depression, that spirit of cast downness, that spirit that can intimidate you and hurt you. It's a spirit that has followed nations and generations. It knows where you are, what you do. It knows when you do it. And it's been sitting there. And it's been waiting to attack you like a fiery dart. And you have to pull up God's shield of faith, which is his divine persuasion that persuades you with the word of God what you should do to fight in every situation and circumstance you find yourself against. Because he tells you that the word of God is living. And he tells you that you can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, that's because he's in you. And his word is in you. You're empowered through your union with him. And you draw your strength from him. That strength which his mighty power works in you. That's just Ephesians 6.10. And then you put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. For you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and mights and rulers and the rulers of this darkness of this age and spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. So you have to use the word of God. The word of God is God's prayer armor. When you take the Word of God and you pray the Word of God, the Word of God becomes living and active in you and around you and through you. And God's Word, he says in Isaiah fifty five eleven, will not return into him void, but it will accomplish all that it says it will do. And he says that he will give you a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. That's what he says in Isaiah 61, 3. He says, I give you the oil of joy for mourning. He gives you strength when you, when you feel like mourning and you're grieved. He gives you the garment of praise. In other words, he wraps you in praise like a garment for the spirit of heaviness. That means the spirit of heaviness has to come off of you so you can be wrapped in that garment. And then he says, I will call you the oaks of righteousness. That's because it's no longer you who lives, but it's Christ who died for you and gave his life for you, who knew no sin to become sin for you, that you might be seen and viewed as being the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by God's goodness. And that is what you are as a believer. Listen, the living word of God in you gives you the beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It's an evil spirit. It's a personality that studies you, that comes and attacks you, and they know your weaknesses, and they know how and when to attack. But the spirit of God in you also gives you the power of God to defend yourself and to fight off all the fiery darts of those wicked spirits. And that is who you are as a believer with the power of God on your side. Listen, when you call out to God, God hears you. And he tells you that you take up his armor of prayer. 
Because that's for every believer. That means it's the sword of the Spirit. That means it's the Word of God, empowered by the Spirit of God, that acts as a sword, and it literally carves out all the enemies, influences, and persuasions in your life. The pressure you feel sometimes is the pressure of a spirit. So you can know that with God on your side, all things are possible for you. Remember, just as, as heaviness is a spirit, the God of the Bible, my Father, which art in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, they are all three real persons in the spirit world who created all other spirits and they on your side who live in you, the Godhead in you, just as he says in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, is greater than he who is in the world. So he gives you his promises and he gives you his word to help you. And the Holy Spirit will direct you to the word of God, his promises, and he will give you those to meditate on. And as you meditate on these words that I'm getting ready to give you, that he's given me for you to get you jump started, he will give you hope and he will change what bothers you into great good because he's for you. And if you love him, this is his promise to you. He says, those who love me, I'll work all things out for your very best. Romans eight twenty eight. So here are God's prayer armor promises to heal those wounds from the fiery darts of any of the spirits that come against you with heaviness and overburdenness and anxiousness and fear. He gives you his word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God that's active and alive. And it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword you can imagine. And it cuts between spirit and soul, between joint and marrow, and expresses and exposes all those innermost emotions and thoughts and desires that cause you not to be feeling as good as you should and not to act as good as you should. And it carves them out with the effect of God's power on you, carving out the spirit of heaviness that has tried to place its hold on you in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just thank you that when we're discouraged or when our hearts are sad, we just look to you because you divinely persuade us. The Holy Spirit himself testifies with our own spirit that we put our hope in you, God, and we praise you as our Savior and as our God, and we rejoice in you. And again, we say rejoice because you're our Father who loves us and takes care of us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you shield us with your glory. And you lift our heads high, as you say in Psalms 3, 3. Many are the sorrows, Father God, we have found with the wicked. But those who trust in you, who rely and constantly lean on you, Lord, you promise that you will, surprise, you will compassionately surround us and place your mercy and tender, loving kindness upon us and wrap us in it. You listen to us when we cry. You hear us and you deliver us out of our distresses and our troubles, as you say in Psalms 34, 17. We know that you order our steps, Lord, because you live in us. And great are you that's in us than he is in the world. So we just delight in your ways. We thank you that even though if we might fall, we shall not utterly be cast down or discouraged. For you, Lord, uphold us with our right hand, your right hand. Nothing can make us hit the ground. That's your word in Psalms 37, 23, and 24. So, Father God, we just come to you, and we just wait patiently and expectantly for you. And we just thank you for inclining your ear to hear our cries. We just draw close to you and know that you will help us that you set our feet on a solid rock, that you steady our steps and establish our goings, and that you put a new song in our mouths and a new song of praise in our heart for you. For we look to you, 
and we worship you and we trust in you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge that you know more than we know and you know more we know. We need to know what you know and we trust in you to direct our paths with your hand upon us, just as you say in Proverbs 16, 9. So we just thank you, Father God, that we fear not. For you, Father God, are with us. There's nothing to fear, as you say in Isaiah 41.10. So we don't look around in terror, and we're not dismayed, even though we may be discouraged. We don't look dismayed because the strength of the Lord is our strength. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. God is in you and with you and around you and helping you in all the affairs of life. He says, I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will harden you to difficult. I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and judgment. That's what God does for you. For God did not give you any of these spirits to fear, but he gave you the power of God in you to cause the spirits to fear. Listen. You can cast your whole care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on God. For he cares for you more than you can even imagine. That's his word in 1 Peter 5, 7. He says, I give you my grace, my favor and spiritual blessing. And I give you heart peace from me, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I so that you will thank me at all time for all things because of the grace, my favor, and spiritual blessing that I have bestowed upon you in Christ Jesus. So we know because God loves us, and Father God, because you do love us, we're persuaded beyond a doubt. We're sure that neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities nor things impeding or things threatening or things to come nor powers nor heights nor depth nor anything else in all creation will able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans eight thirty nine and 38. So, Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We set our mind on things above, not on things of the earth. We thank you, Father God, that you have said, Lord, that you will not in any way fail us or give us up or leave us without support. You will not, you will not, you will not in any degree leave us helpless nor forsake us nor let us down nor relax your hold on us. Assuredly not, you say in Joshua 1, 5. So we can take comfort and we can be encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. He is my helper, my helper. I trust in him. So I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. For what can man do for me when God is on my side and living in me? So be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And his peace, as it says in Colossians 3.15, will act as umpire in your heart, which is Christ's rule in you, settling with all finality, all questions that rise up into your mind. So he tells you what you should do. He tells you, think on things that are true. Think on things that are noble. Think on things that are just. Think on things that are pure. Think on whatever is lovely, whatever things are of a good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, Philippians 4 eight. Because as you renew your mind in the Word of God, the Word of God will transform your life to a spirit of power from a spirit of fear, from a garment to a garment of praise from a spirit of heaviness, and to an oil of of joy instead of a spirit of mourning. Trust in the Lord, depend on him, and he will show himself faithful to you whom he loves and whom he has directed to even hear this message and hear these words so that you can be able to stand and having done all, to stand in the power of Christ in you, 
who will do greater for you than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.